On entering the Kruger through the open gates, we were quickly rewarded with the sighting of a single cheetah. Our first night we spent at Marilla Campsite, which is the campsite of the open area and that's made up of the Tamboeti Tented Rest Camp, the more formal bungalows and guest houses at the open rest camp. Marilla is dedicated exclusively to camping, has around 30 campsites and is based on the banks of the Timbavati River. As we would only be staying for one night, we did not bother setting up the full trailer, but just enough to make it comfortable. The next morning we set off early, past Insamani Dam, where even the hippos were still sleeping. We reached the intersection of the H7 and H1, we turned left and headed north, past the Tara and through the changing savannah and bushveld. Our plan was to stop at the Olifant's Bridge for breakfast, but the early morning stench of bat manure made it unpleasant for any meal. So we headed a little bit further north to the Inuamanzi lookout point. We stopped at Inuamanzi uh, lookout point. Now uh, down there you can, that's where the Olifant's bridges and that's the other side where it's coming from. So the flows from up top, down, around under the bridge and then it goes on past Olifant's camp. Breakfast with a view on the banks of the Olifant River.
It's beyond understanding, beyond what you see. Far beyond what you were or what you will be. Choosing what to deny or what to believe. And it sings a song to me. The hardest thing to be is inside you and inside me. The march is hard, but it's not too far. Hmm. Carry me. After checking in at Mopani Rest Camp, we headed back to Tsenzi where we spent three wonderful nights under the stars, appreciating the peace and quiet. Having spent some time in nature with Roger and Elin, we can honestly say that Tsenzi is one of our favorite camps. Whenever you hear someone rave about this campsite, understand that the review is not overrated.
So we're standing here at the Tropic of Capricorn, or rather what is marked as the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Capricorn is one of five major latitude circles drawn on Earth maps. It is around 23.26 degrees south of the equator. If you don't understand what the Tropic of Capricorn is, every year on the 20, around the 21st of December on your summer solstice at noon, if you were to stand here, your shadow would fall exactly at your feet because the sun would be above your head. However, because of the, its precision, the inclination to the sun is not always the same. And so the equator moves north at currently at about the rate of 15 meters per year. So come Tracy, let's go look for it. <laughs> So now let's drive north and see oh, if we can find it. Yeah. And here we are, 23 degrees, 26 minutes, 10.1 seconds, south of the equator. And this is the actual Tropic of Capricorn. The, it's probably about 100, 150 meters backwards. So, when you come to visit the Tropic of Capricorn, remember that actually you need to go a little bit north. If I now move a couple of meters forward, we are officially in the tropics. Mm. Ever been in the tropics? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> before this. Just at the top of the hill, you may see a car. That is where the actual traffic uh, of Capricorn marker is.
So we checked in at uh, Willy Funds and we're ready to go to Balooli. We just checked the weather report to say it's going to hose down with rain tonight. <laughs> so we've got to batten down the hatches when we set it up. And we just stopped at Willy Funds. Oh, we got ice cream. Yes, yes ice cream, ice cream. We got ice cream. Very hot. It's hot. It's like 33 or something. So we're going to go set up quick, have a gin and tonic, and wait for that storm to batter us. <laughs> Okay, so we did a drive from Balule down the S90 and then took the S89 and to the H14 and then down and then up the one-way road, the S147, up to the Nkhotsawea and then back up to Balule. Our afternoon game drive was very eventful. From seeing a zebra that was resting on the road, which we initially believed to be dead, but fortunately the sound of our vehicle got him going. And then a pride of lions, with the female leading us along the road for some way before she strolled off into the bush. After her delaying us slightly, we gave way for a vehicle behind us to pass. 
when we came across a fine specimen of a leopard that had us observing it for almost 20 minutes while it seemed she was stalking a herd of wildebeers. When we could no longer hang around watching her, we had to get back to camp, only to get caught by the predicted rainstorm hitting us a lot earlier than expected. Oh well, just another day in Africa. Staying at Baluli, we had a whole variety of animals actually visit us at the fence. We didn't even need to go out on game drives often to see everything. We had elephant, giraffe, waterbuck, hyena, obviously, they patrol the fence. Yeah, um, we've seen a lot more this time than the previous, previous time. Yeah, it's April versus September, a year or two apart, but uh, still, the amount that we saw in um, in, in this area was also an amazing amount. Yeah, people always say, oh, the, you know, you're not going to see anything in the north. But we've seen plenty. Cats. We didn't see a lot along the H1. That was the other thing. Yeah, we've done a lot of the off-road, um, the, the, the dirt road, off tar. And we have seen a lot. We've seen three other big cats. Yeah, well, we've seen all three big cats, should we say? Yeah. Uh, we saw a cheetah we, on the way in, we saw a beautiful leopard sighting the other day, we saw lion on the same day, and that was just on the Khotso uh, loop. Yeah, all near camp. Yeah, all within 10 kilometers almost. And so it came to pass that our time in the Kruger was done. The grey and drizzly skies reflecting our sombre mood. The only consolation is that we knew we would return one day. And I start to sing Too far. 